Section 11.2, stoichiometric calculations. The objectives of this lesson is to list the sequence of steps used in solving stoichiometric problems and solve stoichiometric problems. Some vocabulary to review will be chemical reactions. Not only are you probably having a difficult time spelling and saying stoichiometry, you're probably also asking yourself, well, what tools do I need to perform stoichiometric calculations? All stoichiometric calculations begin with a balanced chemical equation. Mole ratios based on the balanced chemical equation are needed as well as mole to mole conversions. The vigorous reaction between potassium and water um, shown below. Uh, in this equation, the balanced chemical equation is that you need two potassiums for every two waters and you produce two potassium hydroxides for every and uh, one uh, hydrogen molecule. Uh, right. You might ask yourself, right, how much hydrogen is produced if only right, 0 0.04 moles of potassium is used? So you answer this question, identify the given or known substance and the substance that you uh, need to determine. Uh, the given substance is 0 0.04 moles of potassium and the unknown is the number of moles of hydrogen. Because the given substance is in moles and the unknown substance is to be determined is also in moles, this problem involves a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. To solve this, the problem, you need to know how the unknown moles of hydrogen are related to the known moles of potassium. In section 11.1, you learn to derive mole ratios from the balanced chemical equation. Mole ratios are used as a conversion factor to convert the known number of moles of a substance to the unknown number of moles of another substance uh, in the same reaction. Several mole ratios can be written from the equation but how do you know to choose the correct one? As shown below, the correct mole ratio, one mole of hydrogen to two moles of potassium, uh, has moles of unknown in the numerator and moles of known in the denominator. Using the mole ratio conversion, uh, using the mole ratio converts the moles of potassium to the unknown um, of moles of hydrogen. The following ex uh, example problems show mole-to-mole, mole-to-mass, and mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometric problems. The process used to solve these problems is outlined in this strat problem solving strategy below. Right. So the flow chart below outlines the steps used to solve mole-to-mole, mole-to-mass, and then mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometric problems. Right, the first thing you're always going to want to do is go ahead and solve or, or determine your balanced chemical equation. Um, then you're going to want to determine where to start your calculations. And note the unit of the given substance. If mass, usually in grams, of the given substance is the starting unit, begin your calculation with step two. If amount, which is in moles, of the given substance um, is the starting unit. Skip step two and just begin your calculations with step three. Uh, the end point of the calculation depends on the derived unit of the known substance. If your answer must be in moles, right, stop, uh, stop calculating after step three. But if it must be in grams, go on to step four. Right, I would highly suggest to go ahead and copy down this little flow chart. All right. In step one, we start with a balanced chemical equation to go ahead and interpret uh, the equation in terms of moles. In step two, right, go ahead and convert from grams to moles of a given substance and use the inverse molar mass um, as your conversion factor. Right, and that arrow tells you what your setup should look like. And step three, convert from moles of the given substance to the moles of your unknown substance. So you're going to be using that mole ratio you get 
from your balanced chemical equation. Now, if you've got your moles of your unknown, you can go ahead and convert your moles of your unknown into a mass by using the mass of your unknown substance. And again, you would multiply that by the molar mass of your known substance. Let's look at example problem 11.2, a mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problem. One disadvantage of burning propane is that carbon dioxide is one of the products. The released carbon dioxide increases the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. How many moles of carbon dioxide is produced when 10 moles of propane is burned in excess oxygen in your gas grill? So let's go ahead and analyze the problem. You're given moles of the reactant, which are propane. You must find the moles of the product, CO2. First write down the balanced chemical equation, then convert from moles of propane to moles of carbon dioxide. The correct mole ratio um, has moles of unknown substance in the numerator and the moles of your known substance in the denominator. So we know how many moles of propane we're dealing with, but we don't know exactly how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced. So looking at the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of propane, we can see that it is three moles of propane for, uh, excuse me, three moles of carbon dioxide for every mole of propane. So we're going to use that conversion factor and multiply that against the moles of propane, which are 10 in this case. And since it's a 3 to 1 ratio, we would be producing 30 moles of carbon dioxide as a product. So go ahead and pause the video uh, at this time, and we'll work on practice problem 11. Um, methane and sulfur react to produce carbon disulfide. Go ahead and balance the equation. Uh, calculate the moles of uh, carbon disulfide produced and then how many moles of uh, dihydrogen sulfide is also produced. Right, here are your answers to uh, 11A, B, and C. Now suppose you know the mass, uh, the number of moles of a reactant or product in a reaction, and you want to calculate the mass of another product or reactant. This is an example of mole to mass conversion. Let's look at 11.3 to see a mole to mass stoichiometry conversion. Determine the mass of sodium chloride, commonly called table salt, um, produced when 1.25 moles of chlorine gas reacts vigorously with excess sodium. You are given the moles of the reactant, chlorine gas, and must determine the mass of the product, sodium chloride. You must convert from moles of chlorine gas to moles of sodium chloride using the mole ratio from the equation. Then you need to convert moles of sodium chloride to grams of sodium chloride using the molar mass as the conversion factor. What we do know is how many moles of chlorine we start with, but what we don't know is how many mole, uh, what is the mass of sodium chloride produced. So if we look at the balanced chemical equation, it's two moles of sodium for every one mole of chlorine for every two moles of sodium chloride produced. But again, sodium in this case is in excess. So we need to go ahead and have the moles uh, the mole ratio should be the moles of chlorine, which is our known in the denominator, and then the moles of sodium chloride um, in the numerator. Take that mole ratio and multiply it against um, our given amount of moles, and you should determine that you have 2.50 moles of sodium chloride produced. But we need to know, right, what is the mass of that? So we take that 2.50 moles of sodium chloride and multiply it against the molar mass, in which we produce 146 grams of sodium chloride. 
right? At this point, go ahead and pause the video and try prob uh, practice problem number 13. If you were preparing uh, to carry out a chemical re reaction in the laboratory, you would need to know how much of each reactant to use in order to produce the mass of product you required. Example 11.4 demonstrates how you can use a measured mass of the known substance, the balanced chemical equation, and mole ratios from the equation to find the mass of the, of the unknown substance. In example problem 11.4, um, ammonium nitrate, an important fertilizer, produces dinitrogen oxide um, and water when it decomposes. Determine the mass of water produced from the decomposition of 25 grams of solid ammonium nitrate. You're given the description of the chemical reaction uh, and the mass of the reactant. You need to write the balanced chemical equation and convert the known mass of the reactant to moles of the reactant. Then use mole ratios to relate moles of the reactant to the moles of the product. Finally, use the molar mass to convert from moles of the product to the moles of pro um, to the mass of product. So we know that we're starting with a known mass of ammonium nitrate, but we want to know how much water we're producing in the end. So set up our balanced chemical equation. Uh, we'll see that we need to convert our mass of ammonium nitrate to a mole so that we can then use those moles of ammonium nitrate to convert them into moles of water. So by picking the molar ratio of two waters for every one ammonium nitrate, we can turn our moles of reactant into moles of product and we would find that that we get um, 0.624 moles of water. Now we would just take that and multiply it against the molar mass of water and it would tell us that for every 25 grams of ammonium nitrate we get 11.2 grams of water. Okay. At this time go ahead and pause your video and try practice problem 15. Here are your answers to practice problem 15. Section 11.2 Summary Chemists use stoichiometric calculations to predict the amount of reactants used and uh, products formed in specific reactions. The first step in solving stoichiometric problems is writing the balanced chemical equation. Mole ratios derived from the balanced chemical equation are used in stoichiometric calculations. In stoichiometric problems, make use of mole ratios to convert between mass and moles.